Disney World is holding back, but how much are they really keeping us in the dark? And can their upcoming projects guarantee that they'll hold on to theme park dominance? We're taking a peek into Disney World's future today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and to say that there's been a lot going on in the Disney World scene lately is both a major understatement and a major overstatement, because while we've heard the mumblings and rumblings of new park projects, like the new restaurants and rides and lands and maybe even a new park, we're only aware of the foreshore reality of a few of those projects, with little to no other concrete details about anything else. Meanwhile, Disney's biggest competitor, Universal Orlando, has been bombarding us with new announcements lately. Which brings us to the major question we're addressing today. Is Disney World stalling out on us? Does Disney have a major project that's going to directly compete with, if not surpass, what Universal has in store? Is Disney just holding out until the right time to spill the beans? Or is Disney trying to tease us with possibilities instead of promises as it decides what move it needs to make during this exciting game of theme park chess? Just to give you a brief roadmap of what we'll be covering today, we're going to start by talking about what Disney World's recently teased us with, what Universal has announced for its future, how we think Disney is planning on responding to these major plans, and most importantly, how all of this is going to impact your future theme park vacations from here on out. So let's jump in the time machine and go back to the summer of 2022, during the D23 Expo when Disney first started throwing out these big yet super, super vague idea bones for their Disney World audience to gnaw on. During the theme park panel of the Expo, a couple of Disney's executives discussed some blue sky ideas for the Florida parks. This was an interesting move on Disney's part to announce during such a big event, especially when these ideas were just ideas. This was the first time that Disney kind of did that. They basically said, we're going to tell you all the stuff we're thinking about versus all the stuff that we have set in stone. So we learned about the might be and could be potentials of a Moana and or Zootopia re-theme for Dinoland USA and Disney's Animal Kingdom, as well as a new Coco and Encanto or Disney villains themed space beyond the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and Magic Kingdom. Sure, these ideas are exciting and interesting to mull over and I use big capital letters in my Instagram posts and stuff. Stuff, but a blue sky concept is something that could come to the parks, but is definitely not officially confirmed by Disney and could change a lot or never be built at all. And we've actually even seen some of that with the blue sky stuff from 2022 already. So the fact that Disney just threw out all these ideas at once is their main course of this park panel, knowing good and well that not all of them or maybe even none of them would stick in the end, had us scratching our heads. Are we supposed to get excited about these Disney World possibilities or will getting our hopes up about these new lands definitely let us down? Well, we got some answer to that during the Destination D23 event this last September. So one year later, Disney continued to hype us up about this big scale Magic Kingdom expansion in the works, claiming it to be their biggest Magic Kingdom expansion to date, but still not revealing what it's going to be. Disney also let us know that the ideas for the Dinoland USA replacement as of now have completely morphed into a Tropical Americas concept, which ended up having nothing to do with a Moana and Zootopia retheme, and instead had everything to do with an Encanto and Indiana Jones retheme instead. So when we tell you that Disney made an interesting move by throwing out those very, very early stage concepts in 2022, we were not kidding you, because Disney's already significantly changed their tune since the last time we've heard this song being sung. Now, what's interesting to me is that we as the fans are still just as excited about these changes, even though the changes aren't even the same changes we were excited about before. So along with these new land expansions, we've also learned about other new projects being sprinkled into the Disney World scene here and there, which we're going to cover later on in this video. But what's important to note is that Disney got away with announcing Blue Sky Concepts and they're going to keep doing it. But it's not just Disney World that the company's teasing us about when it comes to new park additions. It's literally every single Disney park worldwide, which we learned more about at the beginning of this year. Let's move on to the update. So on February 7th, 2024, during Disney's first quarter earnings call, we finally got a few answers as to what Disney's been up to lately. Okay, that's kind of a lie. We actually got more questions than we did answers. During the earnings call, Disney CEO Bob Iger was asked directly about those potential theme park expansions. 
Iger stated that Disney is already hard at work determining where they're going to place their investment and what these investments are going to be. Yep, still pretty vague. But this comment seemed to point back to the $60 billion investment plan Disney announced toward the end of 2023. In case you're not familiar with that, Disney's looking to invest $60 billion toward their parks, experiences, and products segment and funnel that money into the company over the next 10 years. Let me say that again. Disney wants to expand their parks within a 10-year time frame. So it's important to keep that 10-year timeline in your back pocket for Disney's future announcements because that 10-year timeline gives Disney a lot of flexibility to work with when they announce these new lands and attractions and other park areas with little to no other specifics for us to latch on to. And Iger also said in an earlier earnings call back in November that that investment will hit the domestic parks mostly in the back half of those 10 years, which means we've still got another five to six years to wait. But Iger was trying to juice up excitement by saying that every park location will start receiving brand new stuff and those new additions will start to roll out in 2025. From there, Disney plans to have a cadence of new stuff every year. Again, this still doesn't give us a whole lot of context to work with. What exactly is the new stuff? How big is it going to be? What projects that we know about now will finally go live? And are we talking just Cruise Line? Are we talking Adventures by Disney? Are we talking International Parks? Or are we actually going to see some domestic park improvements as well? And what projects have yet to be revealed or even teased? Yep, I admit, some of that mystery is fun to speculate about and makes for interesting conversations around the dinner table and among our team here at DFB. And it's understandable that Disney wants to keep some of those major projects and their potential timelines under wraps while they're still deep in development. After all, we saw what happened in 2020. But considering the fact that Disney's already dropped a whole bunch of new stuff on our plates when it comes to Disney World's future, and they're still teasing us with the potential of new things to come, things are starting to feel like stacking cliffhanger after cliffhanger at the end of a book and giving a reader no real answers for anything until the next book of the series is released. Meanwhile, Universal Orlando has been cracking its knuckles and feeding theme park hungry guests exactly what they've been looking for. Answers. Which brings me to the competition. There's a fire that might be burning Disney's underside, pressuring the company to reveal something more concrete real soon. And that fire's name is Universal Orlando. So Universal and Disney have, for the longest time, been in direct competition with each other. Ever since, you know, they announced Universal Studios was opening and Disney decided to push MGM as quickly as possible. And this pushes both companies to be bigger, better, and more appealing to their guests, which is great for us because then we get to experience a whole lot of new cool stuff. Recently, Universal tossed the ball back into Disney's court after the company revealed all that they've been up to lately. Not only as Universal recently opened up their new Super Nintendo World in Universal Studios Hollywood and a new Minions Land in Universal Studios Florida, but back in 2019, the company announced their third theme park for the Orlando area, Epic Universe, which is now set to open in time for summer 2025. Epic Universe is what Universal describes as their most ambitious theme park yet. In January 2024, Universal officially announced and revealed the details about the five themed lands that are going to make up Epic Universe. Celestial Park will serve as the heart and main hub of Epic Universe, becoming the gateway to explore the four additional worlds of the park. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter Ministry of Magic will create another chapter of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, giving you the chance to explore lore from Fantastic Beasts as well as the British Ministry of Magic. Super Nintendo World is going to be similar to the land that just opened in California and the one that's been existing over in Tokyo these past few years, but Universal states that there'll be new ways to interact and play in this up-and-coming Orlando iteration, making this Super Nintendo the most interactive, colorful world they've ever created. How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke will be the world's first dragon Viking utopia from the DreamWorks movie franchise. And Dark Universe will draw on Universal's rich history with the horror genre. Here, visitors will encounter everything from the experiments of Dr. Victoria Frankenstein to the shadowy landscape where monsters roam in a world of myth and mystery. So that sounds terrifying and very, very cool. Along with this new park, Universal is also going to be opening its new hotel, Universal Helios Grand Hotel, which will open right up into Epic Universe. But there's even more. Universal also filled us in on new parks and attractions that have nothing to do with their California or Florida locations. 
Universal Kids Resort is another new park that's slated to open in Frisco, Texas, right here where I live, featuring more kids-specific attractions themed around characters like the Minions and Shrek. They're actually opening it right up by my dermatologist's office. So I get to go look at all that dirt every single time I go to the doctor. (laughs) Anyway, over in Las Vegas, Universal Parks and Resorts announced its plan to create a year-round horror-focused destination, the exact opposite of the Universal Kids Resort, and this will be inside the Area 15 Entertainment District. This expansion will feature an immersive, horror-centric experience all year round, so it's like Halloween Horror Nights all the time, and it'll have high-energy food and beverage spaces by day turned to haunting bars and eateries by night. To be fair, we haven't heard much in regard to the opening dates for these last two Universal expansions to be, but we do know that 2025 is going to be a big, big year for Universal Once Epic universe goes live so big question is disney world planning on responding to universal's new park with their own new park is that why projects are being kept so tightly under wraps where disney can only throw us scraps off of the proverbial blue sky ideas table for now just to keep us drooling for more Is that where a big section of this $60 billion investment is going to be funneled? And why the 10-year timeline that Bob Iger mentioned was created in the first place? Well, Disney has done a similar game of back and forth before when it comes to its healthy competition with Universal. When Universal Studios Florida was planning on opening their movie-centric park in the Orlando area, Disney squeezed in there with their own movie-centric theme park, MGM, which is now Hollywood Studios, and it was fast-tracked and released by 1989, one year before Universal Universal Studios Florida could go live. And while Disney may not respond to Universal's park this time in the same sort of manner, it seems that experts are staying on high alert for a fifth gate announcement from Disney. By the way, the speculation about a fifth Disney World park has been going strong for decades now. Animal Kingdom, the fourth Disney World park, opened in 1998, and Disney fans have been asking what's going to be next ever since. Instead of announcing a fifth gate, though, Disney's embarked on expansions and transformations in its existing parks for a good long while. The new Fantasyland and Magic Kingdom opened in 2012. The addition of Pandora and Animal Kingdom was 2017. Toy Story Land and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opened in Hollywood Studios in 2019, and a transformation of many areas of Epcot that should finally be complete later this year. There's also been a huge focus on Disney hotels these past few years. We've seen character re-themes take over many hotel rooms, including, but not limited to, the Incredibles re-theme at the Contemporary, the Moana re-theme at Polynesian Village Resort, and the Mary Poppins re-theme in Grand Floridian. Lots of new restaurants have been added and remodeled, like pretty much all the table services at Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, and the new additions coming to Boardwalk Inn as we speak, Cake Bake Shop and Blue Ribbon Corn Dogs, the additions that already came to Boardwalk Inn, like the Boardwalk Deli and Carousel Coffee, and the major menu slash restaurant changes over at Contemporary Resort, especially with Steakhouse 71, replacing the wave of American flavors and California Grill, switching from a more a la carte menu style to prefix. And even more DVC changes have been taken over the resort scene lately, with Riviera Resort added to the Skyliner route in 2019, Grand Floridian renovating the Big Pine Key building with DVC rooms in 2022, and Polynesian Village currently adding an entirely new DVC building to their property as we speak slated to open later in 2024. Even Fort Wilderness, which was originally considered to be more of a moderate resort, is transforming its cabins to become part of the DVC scene too, which will be open for guests to stay in by July 1st. And there are still so many more lobby, room, restaurant, and overall maintenance projects that I haven't even begun to touch on that Disney's been prioritizing in their hotels, just to make them more appealing for future guests. Then, of course, there's all the other expansions we mentioned earlier that Disney's been teasing us with concerning those shiny new Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom additions to be built in the parks during, I don't know, someday. So Disney World may be staying on that route for a while, focusing solely on expansions rather than full-on new parks. Or are they? In early 2023... Disney confirmed that a fifth theme park for Disney World was at least on the drawing board as it was included in a comprehensive land use plan approved by the Reedy Creek Improvement District, which was the former name of the special district that governs most of Disney World's land. Now it's known as the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District and is controlled by a board appointed by Florida's governor rather than by Disney itself. The plans approved last January allow for the building of one additional major theme park and two additional minor theme parks. Very interesting. And yet, as much as 
Disney World's been teasing us these past couple of years with their blue sky ideas and that concept art, we have yet to hear anything directly from the company about a fifth park in the works. Still, many believe an announcement will be coming soon, and with the 2024 D23 Expo coming to Anaheim this year, who knows? Maybe Disney's holding on to that sort of major announcement as a grand finale? Maybe? I'm not betting on it, but we'll see. So what's important to keep in mind when we talk about all these secrets and teases and potentials of Disney World and how it looks like Universal might be trumping Disney in competition right now? Here are two vital things to remember. Number one, Disney World isn't the only part of Disney's entertainment section that the company has to keep building and improving upon. Remember that $60 billion has been set aside for all of Disney's parks and cruise ships, experiences and products, not just Disney World. So while Universal looks like it's been up to a whole lot more than Disney recently, you gotta take a look at Disney's other entertainment sections to really get an idea of how busy the company's been of late. Disneyland over on the West Coast is trying to get the Disneyland Forward project underway to help transform that park into more of a resort area while also expanding upon its parks with new lands and attractions. Tokyo Disney Sea is getting ready to open up their Fantasy Springs area, which will feature three new areas based around Tangled, Frozen, and Peter Pan. Note, the $60 billion may not impact the Tokyo parks as much as the other parks, since these parks are 100% owned and operated by the Oriental Land Company, who pays for royalty and licensing fees to continue using Disney's characters and stories inside their own parks. However, because Disney still earns quite a bit of royalty fees from these popular parks, the Disney company is still invested in Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney sees overall success and progress. Shanghai Disney just opened their new Zootopia area with a completely new dark ride and immersive theming all around. Hong Kong Disney opened their World of Frozen recently too. Disneyland Paris has been hard at work updating sections of their park, including a full royal remodel of their five-star Disneyland hotel. And the Disney Cruise Line has been really busy building new ships and buying new ships. We got the Disney Treasure, which is going on its inaugural cruise on December 21st of this year. And the Disney Adventure, which has no release date yet, but will be Disney's first ever cruise ship to have a home port in Singapore. Not to mention, Disney's also getting ready to open up their new private island destination, Lighthouse Point, which will be opening for future cruisers this summer, and probably we'll start hearing some more cruise line announcements soon. So while it may feel like Disney's been holding out on us in so many ways, it's important to remember that Disney's juggling a lot of bowling pins right now, as they always do, or I guess plates, whatever metaphor you want. And those bowling pins and plates are also super vital to how the company makes its revenue. In an interview with CNBC before Disney's first quarter earnings call this year, Iger stated the combination of global parks with the domestic parks, whose business is more than twice what it was before the pandemic, is just an extraordinary business for the Disney company. So a lot of the success came from the global parks this past year due to these new overseas additions and overall attendance and spending growth. The things we're waiting to hear about in Disney World are super important to the company, but it's also super important for them to make sure their other entertainment sectors are staying afloat and healthy and following through with their expansion projects. Now, vital thing number two, Disney World has not been stagnant, though Universal's outpouring of new stuff has definitely overshadowed some of Disney World's smaller projects. It's easy for us to get so caught up in what's unknown that we lose sight of what is known, but Disney World has sprinkled in a lot of new attractions and features in their Florida parks, including Tron Light Cycle Run, major Epcot transformations, including two new rides, new restaurants, a new world celebration area, new attractions, with more to come. Roundup Rodeo Barbecue in Hollywood Studios is there, more restaurants in Disney Springs, and more overhauls inside the Disney hotels. And Disney World has let us know that there is more to come in 2024 and beyond that we can rely on seeing in the parks, hopefully sooner rather than later. This includes Tiana's Bayou Adventure, opening summer 2024, that revamped Country Bears Jamboree show this summer, a reimagined test track ride to be announced, the reopening of 1900 Park Fair and Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, new Boardwalk Inn restaurants, the Cake Bake Shop and Blue Ribbon Corn Dogs opening in 2024, Epcot Festival programming areas, Communicore Hall and Plaza supposed to open last year. Maybe they'll open, who knows? A new Zootopia show is going to replace its tough to be a bug in Animal Kingdom and new DVC resorts for Polynesian Village and Fort Wilderness with the Fort Wilderness DVC cabins 
opening this July, and Polynesian Village DVC building opening later this year. So while a lot of this new stuff for Disney World doesn't necessarily compete with entire new Universal theme park and hotel, it does continue to provide guests who are planning trips in the near future something to look forward to, even in the midst of all that top secret stuff. So here's the part where all of us Disney fans come into the picture. How will all of these new additions, revealed or not, impact our future trips to Orlando? Well, I got three key things for you to keep in mind as you plan your 2024 vacations and beyond. One, you may want to turn your eyes toward the competition. I love a good Disney World trip, but there's no denying that things are going to get awfully exciting in the Universal Orlando bubble in 2025, and the offerings that Universal is promising could very well be more intriguing for you and your family than the stuff that's going on at Disney. I mean, Donkey Kong, Harry Potter, classic movie monsters, and dragons? That might be hard to beat. Not to mention, Universal Orlando has two theme parks and one impressive water park open right now, specifically tailored for more thrilling ride experiences with major roller coasters and adrenaline rush attractions galore. So even if you're not planning on going to Universal right when Epic Universe opens up, this still might be a good vacation trip for your family who's looking for a bit more excitement and variety for their older kiddos and teens. If you're interested in dipping a toe over there, we got a few planning videos out now to help you decide if Universal Orlando is the vacation destination for you in 2024. But if you're looking for a digital planning universal guide you can easily refer back to anytime, go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash universal to download our Universal Orlando Quick Guide, which is a great first step to help you learn about the best restaurants, the ongoing entertainment, the most popular rides, and the best ways to accomplish everything you want to do during your time there without waiting in endless lines. Okay, key thing number two, you might want to go full steam ahead with your Disney World vacation. When new attractions and sections of the park first open in Disney World, things can get pretty packed, to say the least. So during this time, when Disney feels a bit quieter than usual, you might start seeing more reasonable crowd levels and more discounts popping up on the website too, to encourage more folks to come back into the parks. So don't fully count out Disney World when you're trying to plan your 2024 and 2025 vacation, because it might just be the sweet spot you're looking for when all the attention's being turned to the universal scene. Or key thing number three, you may want to hit the pause button on your Orlando planning altogether. Again, we got lots of teasers and unknowns being strewn around in the Orlando scene. And even though we know the Universal Orlando is aiming to open Epic Universe in time for next summer, there's still no concrete release date to let us know if that's something we should for sure be relying on or not. If you've heard about something down the theme park grapevine that you're super excited to experience, whether that be in Disney or Universal, but you don't know when the official opening timeline for that experience is going to go live, then you might want to take this time to save your vacation funds as you wait for more details to bubble up about these future additions. That way, you don't wind up planning a vacation for the parks and then accidentally miss out on the stuff you are anticipating the most. Another important thing to keep in mind, the parks will be wildly busy when new attractions or even full-on parks are first opened. Prices will also be at their highest for hotels and park tickets and lightning lanes and express passes to keep up with demand. So not only will crowds be more intense and the possibility of mechanical mishaps and technical difficulties more prominent as the parks attempt to get into the swing of things with all the new stuff, but you're also going to be paying top dollar for all of it. So even after you learn about the official opening dates for something, it's not a bad idea to wait a few months after the attraction or park opens up so that you can experience it as it's supposed to be experienced with a lot fewer kinks and tears shed and maybe even money spent. So the Disney company has promised big stuff for their theme parks. Iger stated that this company has got so many untapped stories just waiting to be brought to life in their parks. But whether or not Disney World specifically has got a major ace up their sleeve that's going to directly compete with what Universal Orlando is currently conjuring has yet to be determined. If you ask me, which keep in mind I'm just a person with no clairvoyant powers that'll help you peek into the future, it feels like Disney knows what they're doing. They've been in the theme park game for going on 70 years now, and a bit of friendly competition is certainly not something they're unfamiliar with. However, It's also true that Disney's run into its fair share of obstacles these past few years regarding the pandemic, conflicts with the Florida government, billions of dollars lost on their Disney Plus streaming service, and sudden leadership changes. 
But during a town hall meeting with the Disney employees and cast members that was held at the end of last year, Bob Iger addressed these company struggles, stating that he spent a good chunk of time fixing a lot of the broken things that needed attention, and that now he's in the season of building. Building the company, building the parks, and building the studios. Building, Iger said, is a lot more fun than fixing. With that being said, there's a good possibility that we're going to learn more surrounding the future of Disney World during the D23 convention this year, which might finally start dropping some of those cliffhangers and giving us some more concrete answers. But no matter what changes are revealed as we slog deeper into 2024, we at DFB are going to be here to help you navigate all the new stuff as we jump into the unknown together. So make sure to keep tuning back in here. Subscribe to the channel. We'll make sure to keep updating you on all the latest Disney 411. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.